So the first topic that I want to talk about is um, basically how we start creating materials uh, inside uh, V-RED. Uh, basically you have um, with any car you just have your basic car paint obviously um, which is the main the main uh, important part and then you have your plastics and then your various type of metal so first of all I'm going to cover how to create a um, car paint inside Fred and yeah, show you basically how we can set it up to make it look uh, photorealistic and go through the the different options with uh, flakes and unicolor car plates and also a bit more creative with uh, flip flop so I have this uh, shader ball here it's um, from Grant Morick's Mastering CGI website um, it's a great little shader ball and I always use it sort of um, when I'm starting out with my look def I won't um, go straight onto a car because it just gives me a little bit of idea sort of like flake scale and things like this that you can work on and you know it's very light in the scene and uh, doesn't take long to render at all so what we can do um, basically I usually create um, yeah, it depends on what kind of car paint we want but we can go ahead and make a unicolor car paint then we can also create a metallic car paint and also a flip flop car paint and what we can do then is finally create a switch material and then we can put all of these car paints inside the switch and uh, we'll select the shader ball material and uh, I like to use uh, control N which selects this material and then we go to the switch press control M and then now you should be able to switch uh, through the car paints uh, just doing this and you know, this is a quite, very quick and easy way to set things up and um, I'll just put this here in my paint group and I'll rename this something like uh, car paint switch so first um, I think the best or the quickest one to start with uh, will be the unicolor part car paint it's pretty uh, self-explanatory um, it's just a uh, basic car paint that you'll get sort of um, really not on the it's more the cheaper paint I would say in automotive uh, car paints is uh, yeah there's no special metallic uh, things going on so it's just basically you can choose the different color you know and then you'll have your unicolor car paint it's very easy to set up and uh, generally looks good so with the default HDRI you don't get so many so many reflections that can like show off the paint um, you know and the body of the car so what I did I created some more um, HDRIs and I take these from HDRI Haven it's a great free website with uh, some really nice HDRIs and basically I just created one sort of like indoor with these uh, big strip lights which um, you know they reflect really nice especially in the metallic car paint and again um, just yeah sort of golden hour sun and then yeah overcast um, you know just variation and you can see um, how the how the paint works in different lighting situations so as you can see with the unicolor part car paint it's fairly self-explanatory um, we can use some orange peel here and then if you can zoom in and can see how the orange peel is uh, affecting the paint so we can turn the intensity up and as you can see you get this uh, orange peel effect that you find in some car paints and yeah if you can play with the frequency you can just change this to scale and the size of that so it's nice to see the effect in uh, motion and I think mostly it's uh, usually a subtle effect uh, that you see so something like this and maybe you could go a bit a bit less and yeah something like that would be would be nice on a car so yes we can check out uh, the metallic car paint and uh, this one this one's the more interesting one especially in Fred you've got um, some really nice procedural flakes that um, you don't have to you know make any maps or anything like this and play around with tiling and texturing um, it's, it's really nice and really easy to make a really nice metallic paint so we can um, you know we try go with a nice red here for like a base color I like deep red or deep blue and then in the flake color as you can see now it's pretty much uh, what the flakes are reflecting so as soon as we change this to maybe like a red you'll see now we start to get a bit more red in there and I think we can play around um, with the flake roughness and it gets a bit more as you can see it's uh, quite reflective now and if you, you know, play around with the roughness you can uh, 
seems not so reflective and you know of course with the flake re reflectivity if you turn it off then there's no going to be re no reflectivity in the flakes you turn it up and then you'll get um, a lot more reflective flakes and one trick that I have uh, for the sort of finding out the right scale is this I change the ray tracing quality if you can change this to sort of pre-computed I'll zoom in here you can quite easily see now the the changes you make when you're changing the flakes and I'm just going to change this uh, HDRI to maybe another you know, pizza plats or something with a bit more direct light coming from somewhere so you can see now the flakes sort of reflecting with the light from where the sun is coming from I think it's behind this church but uh, you get a nice uh, visualization on on uh, what the flakes are doing and how they are rendering so we can change that and then we can also change the flake flake perturbation which will make it as you can see a bit more pronounced effect uh, which is nice we can play around with this and of course you can really dial in the um, you know the flake size and get some really nice flakes in there I think if you change it here look we get some sort of yeah really nice flakes in the in the paint and there's um, actually three different types of paint or paint types when it's in the metallic car paint and this is more you have like two coats so again you can create um, sort of a pigment color so we can drop that down into red maybe and then we can play around with the flake size and also you see the base color is doing something similar to the pigment color but it's more physically accurate I would say and of course you can change it to three coats and again you can play around with the pigment color and get some really nice sort of deep colors with sort of nice variations of flakes so you know if we turn this to sort of brighter red we can uh, see that when you dive right in you've got these various different colored flakes and again you can see here the pigment color if we change this I believe to red see more flakes and then I think yes this must be the base layer that's given these colors so you know you get some really nice really nice different layered flakes and you, there's lots of variation there so yeah, it looks really good I think in the end so next we can check out uh, the flip flop car paint and now these are uh, very special paint so you don't really see them that often um, usually are sort of like custom custom job flakes so you know you want um, a cool looking sort of different uh, you see the paint change colors uh, from different angles and in different lighting so we can go ahead and create this with uh, we can make it a nice blue and then maybe a sort of green green there and of course we want the the base color maybe around a bit of blue and as you can see straight away in the reflection you're seeing the the green flakes uh, reflecting and you know that you create some really interesting paints there and you know we could add also a bit of red you know get some really crazy crazy look going on there and of course you can, you can change um, flake intensity and and things like that just to give it a really nice interesting interest, interesting looking paint but you know you'd find on you know like I said custom paint jobs and things like this so and again we can see how it looks in and different lighting and and uh, what effect these are doing so so we can see you know what um, was was you know so we can see the different effects that uh, changing the color has on the, these paints and you know you could uh, really make cool looking interesting paints you know for a custom car paint and yeah it looks really really nice so next I'm gonna move on to uh, how we create uh, plastic so I think for most car parts, uh, exterior car parts on the plastic, you always get sort of like a really nice fine grain bump and you know it's it's nice to add this in for the details. I mean most of the time you won't really see it but if you're getting close up 
it's always nice to have that little bit of extra detail sort of breaking up the surfaces uh, or the light on the surfaces just to make it a little bit more realistic. So what I'll do here is um, just create a nice little black plastic and you can use this sort of interior and exterior so we can see uh, you know how this how this looks and um, of course you can add your diffuse textures, your glossy textures but um, what I'm going to do here is just use this uh, structure and what this will do is um, create sort of like a procedural noise map or a procedural noise bump and um, I think we can see you know if we bump up the intensity say something like 10 you can see already you know this is um, giving you some nice procedural noise there's no visible tiling and uh, it, look, it, it works really well when you um, when you know, create quick plastic and not have to worry about creating maps and sort of having uh, tiling or triplane and stuff so you know, this um, also works really well and you can play around with the bump intensity and you know can sort of compare it to reference and then uh, you know, we can play around with the diffuse or then glossy and make it a bit darker or a bit rough or you can sort of you know if, if you have um, again a sort of clear coat look you can create this and you, know, you can create nice bumps so this would be more sort of on your I don't know, body panels um, around the exhaust and things like this or maybe just on the you know on the grills and things like that so it's really quick and easy to make a nice sort of looking plastic and of course you get this nice um, structure with procedural noise which is you know just one click of a button and then you have to dial in the numbers so it's fairly simple and fairly quick and easy to make a, a good looking plastic Another material that I want to talk about is uh, carbon fibre. Um, you'll see a lot of carbon fibre and sort of the more expensive cars like Porsche, Mercedes, they use a lot of carbon fibre around there, sort of uh, on the roofs or around their um, trims or the you know exterior trims and in interior trims. So what we're going to do is going to create uh, carbon. You've got two options, carbon and carbon 2D. Uh, we can start with carbon. So um, what I'll do is again, Control N to select the material and Control M just to put it on. I think you can see straight away um, what this carbon fiber is doing. So now it's uh, for me it's a bit too bright. So what we'll do is bring down the, the glossy color a little bit, and sort of that gives a bit more, bit more accurate representation of the kind of carbon fiber that you'll see on um, on the exterior and interiors of cars. Um, as you can see, you can you know you can change the carbon pattern. So we can have three by one staircase again, three by one interweaved. You can see you can change just the effect um, in there, and also in th five by one. And again, you can see the different effect that the that this has. And you know you can change the pattern intensity to give it a bit more visibility. And uh, of course you can change the rotation. And again, if you, you know want to use some bump, which uh, doesn't seem to do anything inside there, but um, yeah, we can um, I'll go with two by two. Uh, it's nice and accurate, I think, for these uh, automotive cars, as I said. And yeah, if you, you want to create, you can see it changes a little bit, playing with the roughness inside the pattern. Makes it a bit more, a bit more noticeable and stands out a bit more. And of course, you can play around with the glossy color, and you can even give it some color. So uh, you can have you know, colorized carbon fiber, which uh, gives an interesting effect. You, know, you can play around with the values of the glossy color and you know, say give it a bit more accurate uh, colors there. Yeah, so now we have uh, some nice plastics, we have some carbon, and um, I think the next thing we can move on to is uh, brush metal. So. We can uh, create our brush metal here as we have again. We can press uh, Control M and then stick it on there with Control M. And then as, as uh, you can see, it's a bit bright at the moment, so we can, we can drop down a gross, glossy color. And uh, as you can see, it's starting to look a bit more metallic and sort of Titan metal or um, you know things like this. And you can play around with uh, the metal type. So I think most on cars you'd see mostly sort of aluminium. Um, you know, so certain things you'll have gold and, and copper and you know, it's a bit of chromium but 
we'll leave it at Ali Million. Uh, we won't have a, a for now we leave clear coat off and one of the interesting things about um, yeah, the brush metal is uh, the brush mapping so currently it's set to triplanar we can set it to EV uh, planar XY you can see um, sort of these anastrophic effect uh, which is pretty good and really nice to see in uh, these metals and you know again you don't have to set up any separate maps for the anastrophic um, rotation and things like this so you know you can just play around with the, the size and also the orientation and you know really dial it in to get a nice looking metal and it especially works really well with uh, sort of brake discs and you know another complement you can add some structure again and uh, if we can play with the bump intensity you can see uh, what it will do so you can see now you sort of get that really strong brushed metal effect and you, you know, can play play around with the values in here and sort of dial it in again to get the kind of look that you want so this you know you can do this on sort of rims or brake discs as I said uh, trim parts you know you can get a nice um, yeah if you want to see with a clear coat get okay, sort of brushed metal inside and the interior of the cars like on the door trims and things like this so it's a really nice effect and of course you can keep playing around with it until you've got um, exactly what you want to and uh, we can talk about um, the radial setup when we move on to shading the brake discs and you know creating really nice uh, brake discs for the car another important material inside uh, the world of automotive CGI is chrome. Now, it's chrome all over cars in the lights. Um, you get chrome on the wheels, you get chrome in the interior. Um, everybody loves chrome. So, I'm going to go through uh, this again quickly. Uh, we can select again, Control N, Control M. And then we have uh, pretty bright chrome. And as you can see, it's a uh, it's a nice chrome material. And, you know, you can play around with the settings. So, you sort of get like a dark dark chrome or black chrome and you can play around with a smear you know, which will give um, a little bit of effect and of course you can play around with the contrast and it will give contrast in the reflection and again with also the saturation so you can make this uh, suit your needs and then you have these different types of course you have animalium you have gold which you know gives a nice effect and then you can play around with the contrast and and things like this get it really nice and of course has a rough, roughness option so if you want sort of a matte matte chrome then you can um, play around with this and you know just as usual dial it in until you get exactly what you want and you know this apart from the options you know you really don't have to take too long playing around with different settings because you know it's, it's very quick and very easy to sort of find and define the, the look that you want um, relatively easily so you know again you have the procedure of noise you can add in so um, yeah if you have like a matte chrome and you want to add a bit of uh, surface break up in the reflection things like this you can you know, do it fairly easy here again it's kind of like stamped sort of metalish kind of thing and so now what we've got I think we've got our main materials for the car um, there's still a few like tires but we'll go through that when we actually uh, use the car uh, in the scene so what I'm going to do now is load the car into the scene and then um, I think I will shade it from scratch um, rather than using the materials that it came with um, just so we can see how the process works and how quickly it can be done inside Fred as well so I went ahead and loaded the car into the scene as you can see it's a pretty cool looking car I made a couple of changes um, as it had already came in with some shaders uh, but I decided to, you know, to sort of go my own route with my own paint shaders, change the wheels, change the tyres and um, I'm just going to quickly show you how we can set up a brake disc shader as um, you know can help to have a nice looking brake disc so I already applied a brush material ma uh, material brush metal material apologies and uh, yeah, so we can see you have um, here in the options you have the brush mapping so you can set this to planar or, or radial or triplanar and one of the good things about this shader is that you can add uh, structure again so we can have a look at this and um, if we turn off the wireframe here we can zoom in and uh, I think if we change it to radial XZ 
and you can press get center and it'll create like the brushed sort of metal that you get um, you know from a break disc and then you know you can play around with the settings maybe make it a bit more a bit brighter a bit more reflective and of course there's a clear coat but you know there won't be sort of any clear coat on this unless really you're creating like uh, the carbon fire uh, sorry the ceramic brake discs from Porsche or something like that they have this like nice sort of shiny surface area so yeah once that's done um, you will have to do this for each uh, brake disc as um, the get center will then take the center of this object so if you apply the same material for example on the rear brake disc the radial then will be a bit um, out of place because it's not it's using the origin or the area of this uh, geometry rather than the rear brake so it's nice basically you just create four of them and apply and each time just press get center and uh, yeah that's a nice quick and easy brake disc um, it looks pretty good from afar I think and even close up it looks uh, looks pretty nice so we can move on next uh, and we will talk about the cameras and we'll finish shading the car and then we can yeah, start finding nice angles for this car and talk about different lenses and different cameras we can use.